This tutorial looks at how energy changes can be measured in chemistry and relates to some parts of P1 which involve energy changes being measured by using specific heat capacity. You should be able to describe a calorimetric method for comparing the energy transferred by, for example, a number of different fuels um, and also be able to use the data from uh, such an experiment to calculate the energy transferred using the formula where energy transferred equals the mass times specific heat capacity times the temperature rise. However, in chemistry we tend to use specific heat capacity in grams per degree Celsius, whereas in physics we did use it using kilograms. So the equipment that you would use would look like this. It would involve a copper calorimeter, suspended above a spirit burner containing the fuel. You would measure the temperature of the water before and after uh, the experiment. You would use a fixed volume or mass of water within the calorimeter and you would weigh the spirit burner before and after burning. And by using the mass of the water, the temperature rise of the water and the specific heat capacity of the water, you can work out the energy transferred to the water by knowing the mass of the fuel, you can then work out the energy transferred per gram of the fuel. A results table would look a little like this. So for each of the fuels that you used, here ethanol, propanol and butanol, three alcohols, you would have to measure the mass of the burner at the start and at the end. The mass of the alcohol burnt would be the difference between those two. And you'd also measure the temperature at the start and at the end of burning and work out the temperature rise. In order to calculate the energy transferred to the water, you'd use this formula, energy transferred in joules equals the mass times specific heat capacity times the temperature change of the water. Uh, this is on the exam paper in those physics formulae part. Uh, the mass of the water would be in grams. The specific heat capacity is in joules per gram per degree Celsius, where it takes 4.2 joules to heat up one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And the temperature change is the difference in temperature from beginning to the end. Here's a student's data from an experiment to compare the efficiency of three fuels using ethanol. Um, let's use that data to work out the uh, missing data in the table. To work it out, you'd need to use this energy transferred equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. But we don't know the temperature change. We do know that the mass of the water would be 100 grams if it's 100 cubic centimetres of water used. We do know the specific heat capacity is 4.2 joules per gram per degree C. But the temperature change here would be the difference in temperature, which would be 52 take away 22. And that would be 30 degrees. So the energy transferred is 100 times 4.2 times 30 which is 12,600 joules. Now the amount of alcohol burned here is the difference between the mass at the start and the mass at the end. It's gone down by 0.19 grams so 0.19 grams of fuel have burned to make 12,600 joules. We'll look at how we could work out the amount of uh, energy transfer per gram a little bit later in this tutorial. Here's an exam question on this topic then. This question is about fuels. Jody and Natalie burn two fuels. They compare the energy transferred. Look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus they use. Explain how Jody and Natalie can compare the energy transferred by the two fuels. Your answer should include these three points. Well, the liquid in the can is water. To make it a fair test, they would use the same volume of water each time. They would measure the mass of the alcohol burner before and after
and the temperature of the water in the can before and after. At high level you also need to be able to rearrange this formula in order to find out the mass of the water heated or the temperature change. In other words, to rearrange that so that the uh, mass is the subject or that the delta T, the temperature change, is the subject. We can do this using one of these triangles. Uh, in this case, the triangle would look a little bit like this. We'd have mass, specific heat capacity, and temperature change along the bottom and we'd have energy up top. So if for example we wanted to work out what the uh, temperature change was then we would put our finger, which I'm not able to do very well, but put our finger over that one and so the temperature change would be equal to the energy divided by the mass times the specific heat capacity. And so long as you can construct a triangle from the equation you're given on your exam paper, you should be able to work out uh, what the energy is, what the mass is, what the specific heat capacity is, what the temperature change is, if you know everything else in the equation. Here's an example calculation. When 0.2 grams of pentanol were used to heat 100 grams of water, uh, 18,900 joules of energy were transferred, what was the temperature rise if C is 4.2? Well here there is a bit of a red herring in the question which is this part which we don't need. What we've got to use is the um, mass of the water. Now we know that energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature rise. Therefore temperature rise equals energy over mass times specific heat capacity. And that will be 18,900 divided by 100, which is the mass of the water heated, times 4.2, and that comes to 45 degrees Celsius. Here's another question. Here's Jack's experimental results. Silly Jack, he forgot to write in the mass of the water he heated. Could you work it out for him? Well, in this case, what we do is, again, we use E, equals m times c times delta t. And what we don't know here is m. So m equals e divided by c times delta t. And the energy is 6300. c is 4.2. And delta t is 30 degrees. And this comes out to 50, it would be 50 grams then. Finally, from a higher level part of the specification, calculate the energy output of a fuel in joules per gram by recalling and using this formula. Now, as it says here, you need to recall this formula, so you have to learn it, where the energy per gram is the energy released in joules divided by the mass of the fuel burnt in grams. And we can use this equation to compare one fuel with another in a fair way. In other words, working out how much uh, energy is released by burning one gram of each of the fuels. For example, a student might have data like this, where the student has burned 0.5 grams of ethanol and got 620 joules, 0.6 grams of propanol and got 1,080 joules, and 0.4 grams of butanol and got 960 joules. And it's not immediately obvious which one gives out the most energy per gram. So working it out for the first one, ethanol, and then I'll show the answers for all the other ones, the energy per gram equals the energy release, which is 620, divided by the mass of fuel burned, which is 0.5 grams, and that will equal 1240 joules per gram. Working out the others in the same way, we get answers of 1800 and 2400. So we can quite clearly see here then that the butanol gives out the most energy per gram.
Finally, a past paper question on this topic. John investigates the energy content of ethanol. Look at the diagram. It shows the apparatus he uses. John works out that 0.3 grams of ethanol release 780 joules of energy. Calculate the energy released per gram of ethanol. Well, the energy per gram equals the energy released, 780 joules, divided by the number of grams, 0.3 grams, equals 2,600 joules per gram.